Hello dear tea friends from around the world. Welcome to a new tea class with me Stefan Erler. I'm the founder of the Tea Masters blog and the t-masters.com tea boutique as you know. How do I improve my Kung Fu Cha technique? And what are all the elements that make up a good cup of tea? And um, today I was thinking of doing something a little bit different for our class because I really want to focus on you. Uh, you listening to, to me right now. Because uh, since there are many people who are following my classes, actually for everybody it's a different need. Everybody has to focus on something different. Of course, we all have to learn about everything, but if you want to improve quickly on your technique, for everybody it will be a different weak spot. And um, all these elements are like a, a chain that for, that will make the best cup of tea and for everybody the weakest link is something different. So I want to do a checkup list kind of of all the elements that will impact the quality of tea and it's for you to find out okay this is uh, this item I'm quite good at or maybe you will find out that there are two things that uh, you will um, uh, that you don't know. There are the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. Uh, maybe there are some elements you have you did not even have an idea that they are impacting the quality of your tea and this is probably where you are the most likely to make an improvement if you focus on them. Uh, I've made a lot of different tea classes over these last two three years so maybe you can try to find uh, in the um, uh, search uh, on my youtube channel um, a, a class that is dedicated to that particular element uh, or maybe not and uh, but uh, anyway let's start with this checkup of all the elements that uh, make a good cup of tea first water Water. Water is 99% of our tea and therefore it is really one of the most important element that is going to impact the quality of your tea. So you really have to pay attention to uh, uh, suitable water for your tea. Maybe you try different waters that, you, uh, that are available to you. Mineral water, tap water, filtered water, different mineral waters, try to find the one that is the most suitable for the teas that you are brewing most of the times. And uh, very often it's going to be a low mineralized water, not too, not too, not too heavy, not too strong in um, taste and flavor, otherwise these uh, when they are too plentiful with um, minerals, they will crush the flavors of the tea. So in general, you want a water that is rather light, but not an RO, uh, reverse osmosis uh, water. This one we would call dead. Uh, it brings no flavor to, um, to the tea. Water, what else? It's um, the, how you heat. In what you heat your water? Are you using a tetsubin, which helps to preserve the oxygen quite well, keeps the water kind of alive, and adds a little bit of uh, iron and sweet taste? Or are you using a um, silver kettle, which is uh, maybe even more suitable for light teas, for um, green uh, teas or fresh oolongs? If you're using a plastic kettle or a stainless steel kettle, you might find out that uh, this will um, affect your water in a negative way. It will give a taste of um, plastic or the stainless steel becomes old much faster. So what you use, uh, what material you use for your uh, kettle will have an impact. How you uh, wa uh, warm your water will also have an impact. Are you using an induction plate? Um, are you using uh, uh, red uh, red heat? Um, how you say um, resistance? Are you using charcoal fire? Uh, when you use charcoal, you have to be careful not to have too much smoke. Uh, 
Uh, you have to really dry your uh, charcoal very well, uh, and uh, because the smoke otherwise will uh, mingle with the smells of the teas, and you don't want this. You want only to uh, enjoy the tea, not the charcoal. So, um, how you um, warm up your water will also have an impact, and. Uh, at which temperature? Now, for some teas like oolongs and pours, uh, really, it's very important that um, you use boiling water, especially if your tea is in bowl shape uh, or if it's compressed, because it needs to open up uh, in order to release its flavors. When the leaves are already uh, open and uh, tw or twisted, like a baozong or a green tea, here you might. Uh, be able to use a slightly lower temperature, uh, but in theory, when you want to judge a tea, you only use boiling water. It's only if you understand your tea and, and if you understand it, it has some um, defects that you might want to reduce maybe the uh, temperature of your water, or you might want to brew in a certain way that um, uh, it lowers a bit the um, temperature of the water, but um, in general the ideal is to have such a quality tea that it, we, it will work best with uh, boiling water, because the higher the temperature of the water, the more flavors you are releasing, and if the tea is good, you want most of these flavors out of the leaves, you don't want to keep them in the leaves, you don't want to, to waste good uh, material and uh, by using a water temperature that is too low. So, this is already many elements we saw with water that are important, the material, uh, the water itself, how you boil it and to which temperature. Let's come to the second part of uh, the other element that will affect your tea. It is your brewing vessel and your drinking vessels. Uh, so here I'm choosing porcelain, white porcelain, gaiwan and uh, teacups. The advantage with this is this is uh, a similar uh, it's the same material that are used in competitions because it's neutral, so it won't add but it also won't retract to the flavor of your tea. So if you are in a study mode, if you are uh, um, in also in a judging mode, um, porcelain is really the way to go um, and white because then you can better see through and observe the color of the tea and also its um, uh, turbidity level and how clear it is, uh, how clean it is. Uh, all this is important to, to judge tea and the better you see its color, uh, also the, the more uh, information you get from the tea and you, the more you can enjoy it. Also a fine porcelain will be smoother on your lips and um, uh, will give you also more pleasure than a porcelain or a pottery that is uh, very thick uh, and feels more rough. So uh, finesse, uh, it can be better achieved with porcelain, that's why it's really uh, a very suitable uh, material for brewing and for drinking tea. For if you are using an Yixing uh, or a pottery teapot, this will then depend on how well you understand your teapot and, and its um, relationship with the tea. Is it a material uh, that is going to um, transform the um, uh, flavors of the brew in a positive or in a negative way? And these both are possible and um, for me this was one of the big improvements that I made in my uh, journey. I was stuck at a one point because I was using uh, a clay, a wet clay uh, teapot that would absorb all the flavors from my teas and was really not suitable for the teas I was brewing, mostly high mountain oolongs. So as soon as I uh, switched to uh, a guy one actually it um, uh, helped me a lot and uh, 
it was uh, really a revelation and uh, uh, I made a uh, big progress. So when you are in new uh, with T, stick with the guy one in the beginning and then try to find teapots that improve on the guy one. Huh? So your next teapot uh, should be better than, uh, than your guy one. Okay, water, the brewing vessel, the cups. Of course, the third item that is very important to make a good cup of tea is uh, the tea that uh, you want to, to brew. Here today, I'm, uh, it's already evening in Taiwan, 10 o'clock in the evening, so I've chosen a uh, concubine oolong from Shanlin Shi from uh, summer 2022. Uh, it was harvested early June of last year because tonight is a little bit cool and I want a roasted oolong to, uh, to feel a bit warm, sweet and um, not to get too excited before my sleep. Mm. So now I'm brewing it. Now for the technique, we just saw that uh, we have to preheat your uh, our vessel and then Add water without talking. Okay. Let's um, unfurl a little bit longer. So this technique of brewing and uh, adding water, all this will have an impact on, um, on the quality also. Um, but uh, first let's go back to the tea, uh, the quality of the tea. And um, so the more we understand about uh, the tea, have we already tried it before in the past? Uh, so then if you do, then you have a better knowledge about it. Do you know when it was picked, uh, in which season, uh, how it was processed. Here it's a higher oxidation oolong with um, some um, insect bites. Uh, was it roasted or not? Uh, tonight I'm, uh, um, if, in order not to have um, a tea that is too caffeinated, I'm choosing one that is um, uh, roasted. Uh, because it's a bit cooler, I like a, a warmer tea, so with a higher oxidation level uh, from high mountain for the purity and for the strength, so therefore I did not use too many leaves. Let me see, yes, it has opened well. And uh, Yeah, doing uh, like always a back and forth between the cups in order to have a balanced brew in each cup. And the leaves have opened well after a first brew with a very beautiful orange color, excellent transparency, mm. and it smells wonderful. So the more you uh, understand about the tea, uh, it will also help you to, to brew it uh, in a certain way, uh, the best way uh, possible. Um, of course, you want to select it uh, for its uh, high quality. Therefore, uh, for instance, uh, sourcing from uh, my store is a very good option because I'm uh, doing this already for, uh, I think, uh, 17 or 18 years and paying a lot of attention to finding the best quality possible in, uh, in Taiwan every season. 
so I'm really selecting my cheese with uh, with great care. Mm. Mm. Very, very sweet, very pure, and um, mm. a lot of uh, fruity notes, mm. and um, a nice long sweet aftertaste that is uh, very comforting and uh, very relaxing. Um, so quality of the of the leaves um, is also very important and uh, uh, another element that is very important is the choice of the leaves. Um, so actually is you. Uh, how you are going to react to the leaves. Let me take an example. Uh, if I'm at the, uh, uh, at the beach, uh, uh, Bordeaux would not do well. Maybe the best Bordeaux in the world, uh, Chateau Aubryon, Chateau Lafitte, uh, Chateau Margaux, if you were to get one of these uh, red wines when you're on the beach, Definitely, they would be uh, not be appreciated because they are not a good fit for such a heat. You, these are uh, very strong wines, uh, concentrated, that uh, you would do best with um, uh, an excellent meal in uh, in winter in uh, in a restaurant or in a family dinner. But uh, on the beach, you want a rosé, a beer maybe, or uh, something that will, or actually what I like is a high mountain oolong uh, on the beach. But um, uh, these uh, full-bodied wines, they would not uh, be a good match because uh, they, are, uh, they don't bring any freshness when you really need it. So. Uh, discover also um, try to think of uh, what time it is uh, in the day what season it is um, and what is the tea that you are really longing for uh, this is also a very important part of um, uh, brewing choosing the tea in accordance with uh, what is the most suitable for your body and um, for uh, what what you wish to drink the most. Um, some teas, even the best teas, uh, when they are drunk at the wrong time, they are not bringing you uh, the pleasure that they should bring. So uh, part of the Kung Fu experience is really to choose also the teas in accordance to, um, to the cycle of life. So uh, uh, in it's a lot of common sense and huh? when it's cold you want a warming tea in the morning you want a tea to wake you up in the evening you want a tea to calm you down if you want to drink a tea together with a meal you will brew it a bit strong you will brew it stronger uh, also you will also try to pair the um, aromas with the meal uh, pay attention to what type of um, uh, aromas are similar in the tea or in the um, uh, and in the meal. Mm. So really uh, pairing and harmony are very important to uh, choose the tea for the right time at, uh, that makes the most sense for, for you to drink. Uh, so uh, also this is based on your own experience. Uh, when you make your uh, when you have your own uh, tea collection, you will try to think of, okay, which is the tea that uh, gave me pleasure at that particular time. And um, that I know this other tea is maybe very expensive, very good. Uh, I just saw somebody on Instagram who, uh, who drank it, but I know this is not the time for me now. Uh, it's uh, this is not suitable. Uh, so try to uh, really also uh, select the tea that is suitable and in harmony with the uh, right with the moment that you uh, that you experience now okay 
Now, this is a Tianid. <laughs> And then, of course, the technique of brewing. Very important is the way that you are adding water in your gaiwan. The strength uh, will have to change uh, if you are uh, brewing in the beginning uh, a tea that is rolled or compressed and you need more strength to open it up. You can have use uh, uh, lighter touch if the tea is uh, in a, uh, open or twisted. Um, how long you want to um, brew it depends also on your experience, um, how strong you like it. Uh, some people like it uh, lighter or stronger. This is also something that you have to pay attention, but it's not a um, uh, a general, there's no principle that says it has to be one minute or two minutes or three minutes. Really, this is up to you, but you have to pay attention to it to find out what is the sweet spot uh, that is not too light and not too strong uh, on for your taste. And then, when you are pouring in the in the cups, make sure that you have uh, preheated the cups in advance. The he preheated cups help. Uh, to retain the smell uh, longer and uh, um, a higher um, temperature in the cup produces more fragrances so you are enjoying the fragrances much more if you have done a good preheating uh, of your gaiwan and of your um, cups. Preheating for the gaiwan is really important for rolled oolongs and for compressed pours because the more heat you have, the easier the leaves will expand and release their flavors. And that's why also it's so important to use um, uh, boiling water. So we saw there are lots and lots of elements water, about water, about the brewing vessel, the uh, drinking cup, the tea itself, and uh, you. Uh -huh choosing the right moment for the right tea. This is uh, something that takes, of course, experience, but also common sense. And try to see what is the part that you did not pay so much attention to it, and try to pay more attention to it. And there you are going to make, I uh, believe, a lot of progress. Find your, uh, your unknown unknowns and uh, focus on them for a while and I think that's where you're going to make lots of progress. Maybe you have uh, dedicated uh, classes in the past. You can find uh, with a search engine on uh, my um, YouTube channel. Give me um, a like if you find this interesting and useful. You can also order teas from my boutique. The best uh, or the latest uh, harvests uh, are already coming now for this spring. We have a, a very interesting Ali Shan Oolongs who have uh, arrived this week and also the Wenchen Baozongs have also arrived. You may want to, um, uh, to choose and select uh, those leaves. I believe they are top notch and uh, uh, this will uh, help us to continue to make these classes available to everybody. Thank you very much for uh, your interest and see you probably in uh, two weeks again. Bye bye.